Hello, folks. Here we are. It is Monday, December 7th, and we are ending our cells unit this week. Wednesday will be our test. And by now, we've been working on cells for more than a month, which should be plenty of time. I don't have a pocket. I'm trying to put pencil away. Um, but it should be more than enough time. We have spent so much trying to remember all the organelles, what they do, what they look like. It's time for us to finish this one, put it to bed, and that way we can get started on genetics before we hit our Christmas break. So with that noted, why don't we move on just a bit? And let's get started in Schoology. So taking a look at it here, we are currently still in unit three. We are now in week five with the test on Wednesday. Now keep in mind, I also have this full folder for cell test review. So you can go back and you can take a look at all sorts of review assignments and videos and things like that. Don't forget the YouTube channel that this is posted on. You know, all of these are very, very useful for you. But let's take a look at week five for today's focus. And today we will be focusing almost exclusively on this. One of the most unpleasant topics, but one of the most important ones for us to understand. At this day and age, I think it's pretty safe to say that every family has felt the effects of cancer. It is so common now in our society that in many cases, people refer to it as more of a when than an if. So let's talk about it a little bit. Let's make sure that we understand exactly what this enemy is. So cancer itself is an uncontrolled mitosis of cells. So you can think about it like this, right? All of your cells have this on-off switch like a light. Now when the switch is flicked on, cell division begins because the cells have received the information that they need to know that, all right, we need to make some more. No problem. Once that's over, the switch gets flipped off. And then the cell goes back into just being a cell for a while. Well, the problem is that you can have certain things happen to a cell that breaks this switch. And in particular, it breaks it in the on position. It can't turn off. The cells don't have a choice. Their machinery has been busted. And so the cells just divide and then divide and then divide and divide and divide and divide, ultimately becoming something like this. This is the tumor that was removed. I don't know where it came from, but what I wanna point out is that's a metal ruler sitting next to it, a 12 inch ruler. So that should give you a little bit better of the scale. This is a foot-long tumor that weighed something like 30 pounds. And you can see in this picture the actual and real danger, why cancer can be as dangerous as it is to people. Because as the tumor grows, the cells will redirect blood supply. And you can see that right here through these big veins that are running through it. They redirect the blood supply to itself and away from the other nearby organs. So it starts to steal away the blood, the nutrients, the oxygen that everything else needs. And so as tumors get too large, they cause the organs around them to start to fail because they're no longer getting what they need. And it sounds like it should be such an easy thing for us to fix. And at least for right now, it just isn't. It just isn't. Hopefully that will change soon. There's a lot of research. 
We have more and more very promising treatments coming up virtually every year. Now it's just a matter of getting one that will really do the job. And let's explain how this happens so that you can start to understand how the treatments work. So up top, this is normal cell division, okay? And cells will divide and make more and divide and make more a certain number of times. Now, normally, once the cell gets a little bit too worn out that you can see right here, there's cell damage without any repair, the cell is triggered to commit what we call apoptosis or program cell death, cell suicide. The cell kills itself because it has reached a point where its damage is significant and therefore that's, that's how they work. Now, cancer is this idea that when the cell damage happens right here, it's broken the suicide switch, so it can't. So instead it continues to divide and more mutations build up and then it continues to divide and more mutations build up. And finally, it reaches the point where it has all of the necessary mutations to now become a malignant, dangerous uh, cellular growth. Now, ultimately, that's because the DNA takes damage. All right, so in your chromosomes, you're going to have these genes. In the normal gene, it's got one section of it that spells out something very particular. We'll understand this better after genetics. But what's happened now is if everything's correct, it makes the correct protein. And that's what controls cell division, cell apoptosis, all of that. But if a mutation happens, it can change the spelling. So instead of GGC, now it's G. T C. Well, that means that it makes the wrong protein. This protein doesn't have the right shape, just like enzymes. We talked about those. And therefore, it can't affect things the way it should. It can't control cell division. And so now the cell is stuck in that cycle due to a mutation, due to damage to the DNA. Now, cancer cells normally start off small. And then it is as they grow, they form these smaller bits that then get bigger and bigger. We would not consider this cancer until we reach this in situ, which basically just means cancer that exists, cancer in the scene. Invasive is the bad stuff, and that's what we always want to try to avoid. So personal example. I don't know if you guys can see this red spot right here on my arm. That is called a cherry angioma. It's a very common form of precancerous tissue, kind of like how they could uh, tell you if you've got a mole. Watch the size and the shape, the outline of it. And so, you know, I have the possibility on my arm. If that little dot ever starts to grow or change shape, I've got to have it looked at really quickly because that's a sign that it's going from this hyperplasia and starting to form a dysplasia. And that is the early step of full cancer. So, yeah. Now, how do we treat it? Well, generally speaking, the first thing that we do is we need a biopsy. Now, all a biopsy is, and I know this sounds very scary, is to jab a needle into it. So what we do is we take a needle, we jab it into the tumor to the best of our ability to find, and then when we pull back a little bit, it sucks in some cells. That's the key, because the cells are going to tell us, is this cancer, like dangerous cancer, or is it benign? And the way is to then take a look at all those cells that are brought in by the biopsy needle. Okay, so modern day, we have machines and computers that do this for us. But back in the past, this had to be done by individuals, which is how we're going to practice it today. So what we would do is we would take this sample of cells, and then we would want to zoom in on that. And we want to see how many of them 
are currently engaged in cell division. Because if the number of them that are dividing is above a certain threshold, then we can say that this is a cancerous tissue. We can say that this is a tumor. Because if most of these cells are just sitting in interphase, they're just chilling and relaxing and doing their thing, we've got no problem. It's what we call a benign tumor. It was cells that grew, but it stopped or it's just, it's not going to be a problem unless something goes else goes wrong with it. For uh, invasive, uh, dangerous cancer, in which case we've got to know how many of them are currently divided. So that's what we're going to do today. If you take a look, lab number 18 is our cancer biopsy lab. So for this lab, the uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward. What you're going to do is you are going to, for each example, count the total number of cells pictured. Now, I don't expect you to get every single cell. Just count the ones that you can see clearly. Sometimes there's going to be quite a few. And then you're going to count the number of cells that are in the process of division. And I've included a chart. Here is your normal cell. Looks like this. All the rest of these and anything that looks like that is in cell division. You're going to divide the number of dividing cells by the total number of cells and then record that value, compare it to 0 0.40. If the value that you get is four point or sorry, 0 0.40 or higher than it is possibly cancerous. If the value is 0.4 or lower, then it's safe. So we would do something like we would count the number of cells in this entire picture. Then we'd go through and we'd want to count the number of them that are currently in division. So if we look here, here's cell number one. Looks normal, two is normal, three is normal, four is normal, five is not, two nuclei is not normal. This is part of cell division. So we know that we have five cells so far with one of them being dividing. Cell six also, I see two dots in there. That should not be how it is. So we'll put that one in there. So now there are six cells with two dividing. Seven cells, eight cells, nine cells. 10 cells with three dividing, 10 cells with four dividing. You get the idea. My suggestion is go through and literally mark right on your form. Make a copy, open it in Kami, and put a line through each one as you count it. And then go back through. And any of them that look uh, like they're in the middle of division, put a different colored line on them. And then you just count the two colors. It is much easier that way. Our first sample is very easy. There's like, I forget whether it's like 38 or 40 cells here. And then you're going to mark down the total number of cells, the number of dividing cells. And then you're going to take the number of dividing cells and divide it by the total. I need to modify that. Then sample two. Same thing. This one gets a little bit more because there's a lot more. Do not count cells that you cannot see clearly. So like this one right here where you see the little hand icon, if you want to not count that one, go ahead. Don't count it. That's fine. You can pick and choose. Down here, there are a few that really don't make much sense. So you, And all these ones on the edge there, you might not want to count those. That's fine. And then finally, the last sample. Now, this one is crazy. There's a lot there. But once again, you can see some that just you can't get any information on. So don't count them. And then ultimately, you have three questions. Number one, which of these four samples might be cancerous? Number two, an interesting question. What other condition might be happening that would cause high amounts of cell division but be completely natural and positive. This would not be cancerous growth. And then there's number three. Not a question, nothing, just a statement. All right, so that is our day today. 
We went over our notes on cancer. We got started on the cancer lab. Purple day, folks, we'll do the lab today. White day, folks, I suggest you try the lab today. I get a little bit of it done and then finish it up tomorrow. Tomorrow overall will be our review for the test on Wednesday. I hope everyone has a great day as we prepare for our exam. And I look forward to seeing you in class.